I realized when I was about four years old, I could see spirit and communicate with them. They would shake my bed. They would literally shake my bed. Like, and I was, I was scared. You know, I would just, I remember putting my head under the covers and I just remember saying the Our Father and, you know, praying, please stop, please stop, please stop. And then it would stop and I, I, or I would fall asleep, who knows. And I would tell my mom, you know, my, my bed shakes. Now we lived, you know, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, we lived in a third floor apartment of a house on a side street that was, you know, no trucks went down that street or anything. Because I remember my mother saying, oh, no, that's just the trucks going. But we're on the third floor. And there's no trucks going down my street. You know what I mean? So she was just, but later on she told me, she goes, I, I knew what was going on with you. I just didn't want to scare you. She said, you were young. She did the right thing, obviously. I would do the same for my son. I remember I was 11 years old. My grandpa Jean was in the hospital. Now, grandpa Jean was not my um, biological grandfather. He was my grandmother's second husband. So I had only known grandpa Jean for a few years at that point, and he had been in the hospital. So my mom and I went to go visit him, and uh, my uncle was there. And so there was two hospital beds in the room. He was in the first one. The second one was empty. I remember it like it was yesterday. My uncle was there. My mother and my uncle started talking. So I naturally went to the other side of the room. I sat down in a chair up against the window. Empty hospital bed over here. They're over there. There's an empty chair next to me. And I just remember looking at the chair and staring at the chair. My mother saw me and she, she said to me, she goes, what do you see? So I described the woman sitting in the empty chair next to me, and I described her head to toe, what she was wearing, what she looked like. And my uncle looked at my mother and said, that's Jean's mother. So I didn't know Jean's mother because she had died long before I was born. And that's how they knew that, oh my God, she sees dead people. I just want to work with spirit. That's all I want to do. It's my favorite thing in the world. This is my purpose. I finally found my place in the world. This is what I came here to do. And everything, now that I look back, everything that I've done leading up to this has led me here. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so grateful. And I'll never, I'll never be used to it. I'll never be like, oh, yeah, it's spirit, no big deal. No, every single time I give somebody a reading, I get the chills. I start to get a little teary-eyed. I get overwhelmed with the feeling because when spirit steps forward and, and, and makes me feel how much they love the person sitting in front of me, it's almost too much for the human body to handle. The human body cannot contain all the love that spirit has for us because really all they are left with is love. And that's why spirit isn't disappointed in you. Your father and spirit is not disappointed in you. He loves you very much. And they actually become our guides. We do have guides, every every one of us has spirit guides. And uh, they just, they're just kind of waiting around for you to ask them for help. My dad like immediately became one of my guides, like immediately. And he pushes me to do the best every day, like he would on earth, like he did when he was living. He's so present in my life now. I would say even more so as a spirit guide, and he was very much present in my life as a dad, um, but I'm, I'm so like, elated at that fact that he became one of my spirit guides and he he helps me through every day i'm just here to be the conduit and give you the messages from your loved ones and um evidence that they're here in your lives every single day